What's up everybody? This is D from Brooklyn with a little test and question and video on what to do when your fish gets sick. So stay tuned. From this moment on, you will now be known as Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh ha ha. Welcome, brother Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh ha ha. Enough of the Sharkbait. Sharkbait. Ooh. Bump. Now, what to do when your fish is sick? Now, a lot of us panic. You got to admit, as pet parents, we panic when one of our fishies isn't looking good. And uh, that's one of the reasons why, you know, quarantine is such a big thing. Although, if I had my my actual quarantine to not quarantine ratio, I would probably say more than 70% of us don't quarantine. But this is a fish that I've had for a few weeks now. And... Um, you know, I'm kind of fond of Miss Bars, as you can see. There's my little naked clown. These guys are actually new and in quarantine to join this guy when I, I witnessed him doing something really funny. And uh, it kind of makes us really wonder how to treat a fish when it gets sick. Do you wait it out? Do you medically treat them? Or what do you do? Because uh, we kind of guesstimate what our fish is feeling. We're not doctors. And even like with people, we really don't know enough about the fish's uh, physiology to properly uh, treat them or diagnosis, uh, diagnose them with any particular issue. But uh, as you can see, this guy is chilling now. I just fed him. Um, he's swimming around normally. But what he does, which is really funny, and he was in the same tank with these guys, so I kind of wanted to separate them because I didn't want him to uh, get stuck in a pump or you know get caught up or urchin or something tries to get him because if he's dying the urchin will get him but uh, once in a while he'll get this issue where he can't swim down and it was I don't know maybe he's got the uh, fish constipation or something like that I don't know but it really freaked me out because he was struggling to stay down and I was like, wow, I noticed it before and I gave him a freshwater dip because I said maybe he has like a, he ate something, uh, maybe he got the a parasite. I didn't think he had a parasite because I had him for quite a bit and none of my other fish have been bothered. But uh, yeah, pardon my glasses, early in the morning, I didn't write it. I just got up because I was checking to see if this guy was swimming okay today. And as you can see, he's swimming fine now. But uh, last night, his little black fins uh, were tucked against his belly. I'm like, man, maybe he's got the, the runs or something like that. You couldn't really see his fins. Today, you can see his little uh, bottom fins or like his little fins are prompt and in a normal position. And he couldn't swim down. He was really struggling. And I was like, let me put him in the box, the timeout box, as we New York Islanders uh, <laughs> refer to it. To put him in the timeout box just to monitor him and to kind of keep him where I can uh, make sure that he's safe, doesn't get pestered by any uh, other fish. I says maybe he got a bristle worm got him or something like that. Mushrooms don't bother clownfish, but uh, since these guys are in the same tank, I wanted to also make sure that they were safe and there's no water parameter issues, which there aren't, and to see what happens. But uh, today he's swimming just fine. So uh, what to do when your fish gets sick? Well, first and foremost, you want him in a place where you can observe him. Now, if you got him in a really big tank, this is why I keep this little timeout box. And I'll give you a picture of uh, what it looks like. I have a few of them, so hold on a second. So this is my timeout box, just a little separation mat. It sticks on with suction cups, but as you can see, I use my magnet because I'm not a fan of suction cups. And you can see one of the suction cups actually fell, so good thing I had the magnet. But you can use these little separation baskets. I think it always better rather than pull the fish out of the tank to keep them in an, in the habitat that they're already used to. It saves stress on the fish and it keeps them, you know, if you're already having the fish kept in the regular tank and he looks a little abnormal, there's no point in moving it at that point unless you see physical stress like uh you know egg which at that point if he's in your tank and he has egg it's pretty safe to say all of your fish have been exposed unless you just bought the fish at which you should have probably had it in quarantine but in any case i love these little baskets one of the other things i'll show you is uh i got one of these or rather i got a few of these from uh discus r us and they are 
these breeder boxes. I love these breeder boxes because they hang on to the tank. They don't need a pump, if I can focus. They run on an air tube, which I run air in my tanks anyway. I, I keep oxygen in most of my tanks, unless it has a skimmer, and this one has a skimmer, this one does not. So I'm a, a big advocate of aerating the water column. Always aeration in the water column is always a good thing. So I, I keep these breeder boxes, so if I have to breed a fish, take them out. If I want to uh, put a coral in the uh, tank where I don't want to put a frag rack, which this is probably worse than a frag rack because it hangs out outside the tank. But if it's, uh, you know, something I want to monitor, I love these boxes and it really helps in separating your fish. So always a good thing to have. Uh, you can get them relatively uh, cost effective. Uh, this one was only about 15, 20 bucks, something like that. I love these. So I got two of them. These baskets you can get for about five bucks. You probably get them cheap on eBay or Amazon, but they're just netted the uh, netted fish holders or netted areas for them to stay in a controlled environment. And uh, I'm not an advocate of medicating fish. Okay, I'm gonna keep this short. I don't medicate fish because I don't quickly medicate myself. So how could I just medicate this animal? Little fishy, do you have a headache? Do I give you aspirin? Uh, do you have the runs? Do you need uh, Pepto-Bismol? I mean, we medicate the fish and we really don't know what the heck we're giving them or why we're giving it to them. So I'm a big advocate of not medicating fish. But that is my opinion. It is my uh, belief. Don't hold me to it being yours. Yo, D, maybe my fish has this and I have to medicate it. Everybody has their own free will. That's why this is uh, the United States of America free will. <laughs> do what you want. But as you can see, I'm glad I didn't get scared and panicky because today he's like, well, wow, why am I in the timeout box? Well, dude, you were looking crazy. I don't know if he was having a seizure, and it's possible. They're animals. Maybe he had a seizure. Maybe it's something crazy that, uh, you know, I don't know. So I'm really hesitant to uh, medicate him. What I did do, clean out my filter, didn't take it out. But I rinsed the sponge in a little bit of tank water. I took some water out, like did a little bit of water change. I took the sponge, rinsed it out in the water, make sure that the uh, water is clear, which is why I have all these water spots, because I didn't get a chance to uh, wipe the glass. Um, so water's running nicely, as you can see. It's running pretty, pretty easily. Uh, increase the aeration in the tank if you don't have uh, aeration in your tank and most saltwater people don't freshwater people usually do increase the aeration in the tank um, put the fish in an area where you can monitor him also you want to put him in a controlled area because you want to make sure he's eating this guy just ate <laughs> as you can see he's still looking for more on the floor uh, so that's a healthy sign that he's eating um, then we'll give him about a day or two to see if that arises again. Uh, other thing you want to do is look at colors. Now, this is a yellow misbarred clownfish. It's also ours. It's not a peculiar. So his coloration is slightly different than these guys. Now, these are misbars also. But they're more in the uh, peculiar range than that guy is. So you want to make sure that the colors of the fish, he's doing a little funny little dance. You want to make sure the fish color is on point. You want to make sure that there's no distressed fins that may show signs of attack by another fish or, or maybe stress due to water condition. Usually the slime coat on a fish will show signs of stress. I'll show you these guys just so you can compare. These guys love the camera, so they come right out. You can see that under the blue light, you can still see if they have a skin powdering or see if their uh, slime coat is nice and smooth. It doesn't show any powdery uh, residue, like he's ashy, like he needs uh, lotion or something. But uh, as long as their slime coat is doing all right, I kind of write off ick, you know, because that's usually the first sign. You want to see any abnormalities in the belly. Now this guy is a little bit skinny, but he has been eating, so I'm going to monitor that. Any protruding fins, any visible parasites or anything like this, and give it some time. Don't panic. If you just got the fish once again, you got to be alert and aware that you could buy a fish with a disease, which is why you really want to quarantine him. Now this guy I've had for 
almost a month now so he's pretty much in a safe zone and swimming finally uh, normal again but I'll keep an eye on him I'm not gonna medicate the whole tank for one fish so if you do decide to go to the route of medicating a fish you almost always want to get a small tank get a five gallon get a heater get a little uh, a, a box filter I wouldn't put carbon in it but you could put a filter pad in it uh, ammo chips not carbon you want to get the medication time to actually treat the fish uh, you want to make sure that you are getting the fish to eat if he's not eating that is really a bad sign you want to look at your other fish see if they're eating um, if they're eating that's usually a good sign that it's isolated to that fish since they're in the same tank and most importantly do your research don't do everything on the internet have you a good book um, there are lots of books that go into fish care and health and give you pictures of different diseases as well as um, you know symptoms so you want to do that monitor it keep it under a regular lighting schedule you don't want to freak him out you want to make sure that he's comfortable and let time do its little tail now I hope I hope that this helps because you know a lot of times I get uh, messages from people like hey here's a picture of my fish do you know what's wrong with them and it's it's like sending you a picture of you and saying, hey, do I look okay? It takes a lot of uh, time and care and observation to know when your animals aren't acting normal. So you want to try to do your best to monitor them on a day-to-day -day basis and hopefully they recoup. I'll give you guys an update on this dude. Really worried me. He was freaking me out yesterday. <laughs> but uh, other than that, stay tuned. I'll give you an update on this guy. I'll uh, let you know if I do want to uh treat him thorough uh any more such i'll probably give him some foods with amino acids some garlic get him to eat some healthy foods make sure that he's doing okay i have a wide variety of foods probiotics veggies you know just to make sure it's not the food it could be the food too he could eat something uh get stuck in his uh his gullet or in a gill or something which would cause him distress too so uh i'll look out for that and until next time thank you guys for watching click the subscribe share this video i love hearing from you guys so leave comments below this is d signing out love peace and hair grease i hope this guy is okay because i love my little fishy yes i do he's a nice little fishy He's like, you love me, but I'm in jail, fish jail.